Alrighty, well, amen. Good to see everybody out tonight. Let's take your Bibles and turn over to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to read one verse there tonight, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. We looked at this verse, I think, a couple weeks ago, but I want to bring something tonight a little different from it. You can't hear me? Now, huh? <clears throat> I've got a green light here. Oh, come on! Oh boy! All right, can you hear me now, Tracy? Yes. It sounds pretty. Let me turn my hearing aids down. My wife told me she said you got those hearing aids on, and when you got them turned up, you whisper. So I have to turn them down so it sounds like I can't hear a thing. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Is it clear back there? Yeah. All right. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. If you would, let's stand and let's read this verse. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 1. It says, Wherefore, seeing we're also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Father, again tonight, we're thankful for a midweek service. Amen. I'm thankful to be a part of a church that still believes in having church yeah. Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday. And I pray this evening, Lord, that you'd encourage our hearts, you'd challenge us. And Lord, if there be anybody that's not saved tonight, I pray you'd save a soul tonight or encourage a Christian to go on who really is just wanting to quit. And I just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing and what you're going to do in the future. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. How many of you have ever thought about throwing in the towel? Anybody like that? Anybody know what that term, throwing in the towel? Oh, I saw those hands, Elizabeth. She just threw both hands. Because of him, is that it? Oh, oh the kids. All right, okay. Uh, but anyway, how many of you know where that term, throwing the towel, came from? It came from boxing. And what it was, that if somebody got in there, and you think of back in the days when they first started boxing, and originally they fought with bare knuckles, and that's pretty brutal. I mean, you know, your fists will cut real easy. And what they did is if they were fighting, and they realized that they could not win, and they would go to their corner, and they were beat up so bad, they'd throw that towel in. And you know what throwing in the towel was a sign of? It was a sign of defeat. Now, I don't know if there's anybody here tonight, but we all go through uh, problems in life, and there are times that I wanted to throw in the towel. But you know, when you stop and you think about defeat, that's another thing. I don't want to be defeated as a Christian. I don't want to be defeated in the Lord's army. So tonight, that's what I want to talk about. Don't throw in the towel. And we need to realize it's vitally important for each one of us to live this Christian life to the very best we can. And here's the reason why, because there are people watching us. Uh, I don't know, everybody knows a little bit, but what's going on at Agape? You know, that's discouraging. And I'm sure there's people that want to throw in the towel even over there. I think it's a witch hunt. I think it's totally wrong. Uh, they had the horse sale last week. It was the best horse sale they've ever had. And Kurt Pate wrote an article and put it on Facebook. Pastor gave it to me. And you know what he said, and I believe this. He said, the abuse is not to the boys. The abuse is the fact that they're trying to close something that helps the boys. Now, I said all that to say this. I'm sure there are some that want to throw in the towel. Their hands are up in the air. They said, we're defeated, we're done. But listen, we cannot quit as Christians. We've got to keep going on. And I think about this. Every day we have an opportunity to witness to somebody or to be an example to somebody for the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we throw in the towel and we say that we're defeated, guess what? Somebody who has watched us for days or weeks or months or maybe even years, I think of one right here, Phil. Phil. He's watched his cousin for over 40 years. Over 40 years. 
And I, I still, I told pastor, he said, I don't even understand why Phil's coming. I said, he's coming for one reason. He's coming to get saved. Amen. Now, what if Brother Grandy, somewhere along the line, and he was talking in teachers' meeting tonight about uh, over the 20-some years out there in Bakersfield, that there he's seen everything come down the line, but he determined he was not going to throw in the towel. If he had thrown in the towel, Phil would have never come and sat right back there and walked that aisle and got saved. And we need to realize that every day we have an opportunity. And I'm certain that most Christians want to do what's right. We want to do what's right. But how many of you would say this? It's awful difficult at times. It seems very difficult to do what's right. And we're often tempted to throw in the towel and say, it's just not working. I'm going to quit. I'm done. But we can't do it. And I think about this as God's children. We need to remember that our Heavenly Father, you think of this, our Heavenly Father, the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit of God, have any either of those thrown in the towel on us? Never once they did. And I think about my own life for 27 years, living a wicked, vile life, and he never gave up on me for 27 years, and then four years ran from the call to preach. He never gave up on me then, and in all these years that I've been saved that have not been perfect years, he's never given up or thrown the towel in on me. And we need to realize tonight that our Heavenly Father, uh, he is going to Keep after us. He's going to keep going. He's not going to quit. I thought about 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9. You don't have to turn there. But the first three words in that verse says, God is faithful. And I think about that. He is faithful. If we will do our part, God is going to do the rest in our life. And I think about 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13. It says, there hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. Listen, Jesus, the Bible says, was what? Tempted in all points as we, but without what? Sin. And God says there's no temptation that will, he will suffer the tempted to be above that are able to stand, basically what he's saying. But with the temptation, he'll make a way for us to get out of it. God is faithful. If we will not give up, we'll not throw in the towel, and we'll just trust him by faith, he will get us through the situations in our life. And I think to persevere as a Christian, it's not always easy, but it's always right. It's always right. You say, but you don't understand what I've gone through, and you don't know what's transpired in my life as of late. Uh, It doesn't make any difference. We need to keep on. We need to go on. We need to do right. We need to continue and not throw in that towel. Maybe there are things that happened to you or maybe in your family this week. I don't know what it is. I know we have some folks that are struggling with sickness. This thing of this COVID quote they're talking about and all these different uh, maladies that are going around and people are getting it over and over again. And I'm sure some people are getting discouraged about that. I I think also about this. What about maybe some having problems within the family? Hey, that's a common thing today. But you can't throw in the towel because of family problems. Maybe it's issues on a job or maybe for some now are looking for work. And I don't know if you realize it, but here in Stockton, work is not something that's in abundance for most people. But we shouldn't throw in the towel. Amen. Amen. Or maybe it's financial woes or whatever you may be going through tonight. I want to encourage you not to throw in the towel, but to keep going, stay strong, and keep your eyes on the Lord. Amen. In every one of these situations, no matter how serious, they're not impossible to endure and to persevere. Mark chapter 10 and verse 27, uh, you remember the story of the rich young ruler that came to Jesus and he said, uh, uh, what must I do? And Jesus gave him all these things and he said, I've done all that from my youth. Jesus says, there's one thing you lack. What was it? He said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor. And the man went away and he was sad. And the disciples were literally, they were astonished at what he had said. And you know what he told them? He says, with man, all things are not possible, but with what? God, all things are possible. Mark 10, 27, and Jesus looking upon them said, with men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. And you know, that was applying to salvation, but that principle applies to absolutely everything in our life. Everything is possible with God, but the problem is we got to put it in God's hands. Amen? Uh, Just how do we keep from throwing in the towel in the midst of trials? Well, let's look at some things tonight. Uh, Paul, I think, gives us some really great advice. 1 Corinthians 9.24, he said this, 
Know ye not that they which run in, the, in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that you may obtain. We need to be like Paul. We need to have a goal in life. What is our goal? Our goal ought to reach the prize at the end. Amen? Uh, you say, well, it's a real hard journey right now. Well, the prize at the end is worth the journey we're taking. Amen. And then I think also about this. Uh, we need to be energetic in our Christian life. Pastor, that was wonderful tonight. I think he did the whole Sunday school teachers meeting just for me. Amen. He said we need to have passion and excitement in what we're doing for the Lord. Never get to that place where we're lethargic. We need to get excited. Uh, how many things do we do in life that are extracurricular, outside of the church, outside of Christianity, that we put so much energy and enthusiasm in, and we need to do that in our Christian lives? And then I think also what Paul uh, did is he said there, he said, uh, which run in a race, it says run all. We need to persevere to the end. Uh, it would be a terrible thing to be in a marathon and you're going down the, the marathon trail and you get about halfway and you quit. That would be an embarrassing thing. How much more embarrassing will it be if we stop running the race for the Lord Jesus Christ because of trials, because of ruts in the road, and we don't complete the life that he has given us the opportunity to live? It, it would be an embarrassing thing. Philippians 3.14, what does it say? I press toward the mark for the what? Prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So I want to look at three or four things. To persevere and not throw in the towel, number one, we need to know the course we're called to run. And if you look over there at Hebrews chapter 12, again, in verse number one, it says, And let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the what? race that is set before us. Everybody in here tonight has got a race or a course in life that we need to run. Amen. You say, well, I don't exactly know what it is. Well, get in and do the things you know are right. Amen? Right. Uh, we need to be faithful. We need to humble ourselves. We need to be a living sacrifice unto God and keep our eyes and our ears open. God will show us exactly what we must do. Now, look over at Hebrews chapter 11, if you would, and I want you to think about here in cha chapter 11, of how many of these people persevered before us, each one was given a course to run by God. And I want to just read some of these, and I want you to think about the course that God gave them. Look at verse number 4. It says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained what? Witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. You know, he had a course in life. It didn't last very long, I don't think because his brother killed him. But what was his course in life? It was to show that he was a righteous individual that the world might see that. And not only for the time that he lived, but what it say? It says, though he be dead, he what? Yet liveth. And even when we're dead and gone off this earth, we're going to leave a legacy behind us for others to see that might be an encouragement for them. I think of verse number five. It says, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. I mean, to please God, Enoch pleased God enough that God said, Enoch, guess what? You're not going any further. I'm taking you up. But I wonder if the course in Enoch's life to that point was an easy life. Was everything smooth and, and wonderful? Probably not. But what did he do? He knew the course God wanted him on. He wanted him to be pleasing. And he continued to do that and never threw in the towel. Amen. Look at verse 7. It says, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Boy, I think about that one. What about him? He had a course. How long was that course? 120 years? What was it? Building something he'd never ever seen before? And it was a ship. Now, I wonder if there were times, preacher, when Noah, over 120 years, he came to a part in that ark and he said, man, what do I do now? I mean, when we were building the bus, most of you never saw our bus, but our bus was a, an MCI 40-foot coach and it took me two and a half years and I converted that and made it into a custom motorhome. Well, my wife would come out and I'd be sitting on a five-gallon bucket. She said, why are you sitting on that bucket? Why aren't you working? I said, I'm thinking and praying because I didn't know what to do. There were times in that bus I wanted to throw my hands up in the air and just sell it like it was. And you know, I think about Noah, that was probably the exact same way with him. 
There were times he wanted to throw in the towel, but guess what he did? He persevered, he continued going, and he did not quit. And you know what the result of that was? You and I sitting here tonight. And not only that, but you and I sitting here tonight, the fact that we could get saved. Look at verse number 8 of that same chapter. By faith, uh, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went out, not knowing whether he went. I wonder tonight, he didn't actually know where he was going, but God said, you know what, Abraham, I got a course for you to go on, and I want you to follow that course. I want you to complete that course. And I don't know how it would be for you, but he said, come on. Was it the year of the Chaldees, I think, where he left and he went out from? And he, went, he didn't have any clue where he was going. Listen, if he had not gone out and continued and persevered, where would we all be tonight? And I'm trying to encourage you tonight. We're, we're got a, our country's in a mess. I think every day about our country. I won't look at the news. I still won't look at it, but I know it's in a mess. And there are times when the Americans want to throw in the towel, but you know who can't throw in the towel? You and I that are saved because we are the light of the world. Amen. And if we throw in the towel, what's going to happen to all the lost around us? But I think about how Abraham had no clue where he's going, but God gave him a course. He said, just follow me. And he did exactly that. And then look at verse 11. What about Sarah? Uh, herself received strength and seed and a seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had the promise. You know what I think about that? What, 90 some years old? She said, man, I'm too old to have a baby. I can't believe that this is going to happen. But you know what? By faith, she trusted God, didn't throw in the towel. She kept going and who was born? Amen. Amen. Made a whole just brought us to where we're at today. Every one of these things, if you think about it, all of these people contributed to what we have today in salvation and Christianity. And then look, if you would, also at verse number 24. It says, by faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused. I like that. He refused. He was living a life of luxury. He was a spoiled child probably in Egypt. But you know, when he found out who he was and God gave him a course in life, he did not quit. He kept going. He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And it went on, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto unto the, the recompense of the reward. Boy, I'll tell you what, by quitting would any of those people honor God with their life? Absolutely would not. Listen, they persevered, they went on, and the key to it was they were trusting God by faith that the course he had given them was a the right course and they were going to complete it. I think about for those in Hebrews chapter 11, and it's no different today, the hurdles were high. It wasn't easy. And it's not easy today. It really isn't. And I think about how they had that course to run. You and I have a course to run. You need to say, Lord, show me exactly what you want. And when you realize what it is, get on fire for God. And also, as they pers persevered, we need to persevere as well. And I think about how they all won a prize, just like Paul. Paul, at the end of his life, I'll guarantee you, the crown of rejoicing to put at the feet of the Lord Jesus. And I think there are too many today that are running for a wrong reason. What are you running for tonight? What is your course in life? Is it your self-desire and your own ideas that you've designed for life? Or are you allowing the Lord to guide and direct you on the course in life? I'm glad tonight I struggled. I really did when I ran from the call to preach. But I'm, I'm glad I finally gave in. Amen. And I've never regretted that. Not one bit, not for one minute. But I think by faith, pleasing God is to be our number one main goal in life. And if tonight, you know, I don't know how many of you got anything out of Sunday evening service. That was a long message, but that's probably one of the greatest messages I've ever heard about submission. You know, everything we're talking about here, the course, it all has to do with submitting to God Submitting to what He wants for our life and not trying to do what we desire or our own pleasures. When we, when we have a course that God has set and we reject that and we start to go our own direction, you mark it down, you're going to come to that place you want to throw in the towel. Because you don't have the support of the Lord. You don't have the support of, of God getting you through this when the times get tough and they're hard. But pleasing God ought to be the number one thing in our lives. But then secondly, I want you to use this. To persevere and, and not throw in the towel, 
We need not let anything slow us down. And boy, I'll tell you what, in this day and age we live, boy, the devil's got everything he can put on us like an anchor to slow us down. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 again, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside what? Every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And that says lay aside every weight because there are many things that can hinder. And I broke it down into two things. And I mentioned this before. Uh, there's things that are, that are not sinful, but they are problems. Amen? And you're here tonight and you think, well, man, what are you talking about? Uh, when I lived in Colorado, I used to love to hunt. I'm scared for our pastor. He loves to hunt so much. Amen? Uh, if he doesn't show up on a Sunday during this season, we're all going looking for him. Amen. But I remember that when I was running from the call to preach and I finally got my heart right, guess what opened on Saturday? Elk season opened on salary in Colorado. A guy that I hunted with, he and I knew all the elk were. So I thought, I got to go to church Sunday morning. And so I went to church on Sunday morning. But right after church on Sunday morning, we loaded up. My little boy, he was about eight or nine years old. And this other guy, and we headed out. Sure enough, we found the elk all right, but they were out of range where we couldn't get to them. So we decided we'd go to another area. We knew the elk were all the time. And there was about 18 inches of fresh snow on top of soft, muddy ground. And so we were on a two-track going into this, this ranch, and we come around this corner. And, and when I did, there was a car that was stuck right there in the middle of that two-track, a car and 18 inches of snow and I had to slam on my brakes and swerve to miss him. And when I did, I went down in a ditch. Now, the guy was there and he said, oh, don't be concerned. He said, there's a, a wrecker coming out. He'll pull me out. He'll pull you out, too. So the wrecker came and he pulled that guy out and he came over to me and he said, do you want me to pull you out? I said, are you going to do it for free? I don't have any money. He said, I ain't doing it for free. And he drove off. <laughs> and here we are out of town, out in the middle of nowhere. And that guy left, and here's my son and I, and we're in this ditch, and I got a three-quarter ton truck with great big tires on it, and I couldn't move, and finally I got it rocking a little bit, and then I rocked it back this way, and then I rocked it that way. In four hours of rocking my truck, I got about 100 foot. And finally, I said, it's either do or die. I put it in reverse, I floored that thing. We came up out, slid almost right off the other side. And I was covered with mud from head to toe, and I told that guy, I said, I'm going to church right now, and I will not miss church again. Amen? Amen. And I said all that to say this. Uh, there's nothing wrong with hunting, but you know what hunting can be? It can be one of those weights that will weight you down and keep you from serving the Lord. But there's other things that weight you down. You know, you can take your mind. Your mind can be one of the worst uh, enemies we have. You can start thinking about the past. You can dwell on the past. And you know what that'll do? That'll weight you down to where you'll not live for God. I think also about worldly plans. Man, I, I want to do this and I want to do that. And over the years, I've been one of those projectors. And my wife would say at night we go to bed, she said, can you turn it off? I said, turn what off? She said, your brain. She said, I can hear the gears working. You're thinking about what you're doing. Hey, listen, when you're doing that or I'm doing that, you know what we're doing? We're taking away from the time and the things that ought to be God's. Now, you say, is it wrong to have a project? Not necessarily, but you can't let it consume you. Amen? Because sooner or later, if we let the projects of the world and we forsake the things of God, we're going to get to the point we're going to want to toss in the towel. And again, there's not going to be the spiritual support because we've turned our back on the Lord. Or you might be concerned about what other people say. Don't worry about what people say. You serve God and you do it to the fullest of your ability and don't worry what anybody thinks. Amen. And the other thing is too is putting the temple before the eternal. The Walnut Festival starts tomorrow night, right Brother Dan? And you know what? They need help down there. You say, well, I got other things going on. Well, we all need to put some time into the eternal things. And I, I think about this preacher, you know, we've run out of contacts for the Stockton area and a little almost out of for the Eldo area. Do you realize what this will do at the Walnut Festival? This will give us a multitude, probably hundreds and hundreds of contacts that we can go out and try to tell people about the Lord. Amen. But then also there are the things that are evil. 
And boy, those things definitely don't contribute to right living. Uh, wonder tonight if, if there are things in your life that you know that need to be gone. Things that you used to do. Maybe it's habits. Maybe it's an old type of lifestyle. You say, but it's not real bad. It's just small. Listen, sin is sin. In God's eyes, it, it's sin. And we need to realize that. Over in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19, uh, it says this, Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand assured, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are His. Now listen to the last part of this verse. And let every, what's the next word? Every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from what? Iniquity or sin. If you're saved tonight and you know what sin is and you've got sin in your life, you're allowing it in your life, you mark this down, it's going to hold you back. It's going to hinder you. It will shut you down. Right. And there's too many, too many times the devil will come up and he'll sit on your shoulder and whisper in your ear, well, you know what you're doing. It's not that bad. It could be your attitude. It could be your actions. It could be your words, whatever it is. But the devil will use that, and if it's sin in your life and he's convincing you it's okay, you need to just call him what he is. He's nothing but a liar. Amen. And I think about on the horizon, when the horns get dark and the clouds are forming overhead, uh, that's when the temptation really comes to quit. And I think of, of all that's gone on over this last year over at Agape. You say you don't work there. Why are you concerned about it? Brother Granny and I both put a lot of time in there. And I spent a lot of time with those boys. I saw boys whose lives were transformed and turned around. And listen, that really bothers me, but I'm not going to let it get to the point where it's going to get me down and I don't serve the Lord anymore. Amen. Amen. God's still in control. And we never need to want to revert back to the old lifestyle, whether it be thought or actions, either one. What we need to do is we need to just keep running, achieving, and winning and doing it for God's glory. Amen. But then the third thing, remember those who have finished well. And I think about all of those over on chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews, of every one of those that we, we talked about, it says, by faith they did it. They kept going. They did not quit. And as a result, they all finished well in the race and the course that God had given them. And I know that, that someone who has, has suffered affliction and trial and tribulation in their life, it's hard sometimes. But we've got to continue going forward. I've thought about different people. I, most of you probably never heard of Dolphus Price. Dolphus Price was a Southern preacher, a great Southern preacher, had a great church in the South. And Dolphus Price had a son that somebody killed in cold-blooded murder. I don't know about you, but that would be a dark cloud in my life. That would be a problem in my life. But Dolphus Price did not let that murder change him or stop him from being the Christian that God wanted him to be. In fact, you know what Dolphus Price did? Dolphus Price went to the prison and he tried to lead the man that murdered his son to the Lord. See, that's staying on course. That's not giving up. That's wanting to finish well in life. I think about somebody else. Most everybody in here knows. What about Tim Malloy? Anybody know that short fella? One day I walked up to him. He was out there by the hay barn. I said, Tim, what you up to? He said, about three foot two. <laughs> you know what a lot of people had done in Tim's, Tim's case? They chunked in that town. I've often said this. There's a lot of people that would have been in his situation that probably would have taken their life. Said, that's it. I'm chunking in the town. But I've never seen Tim be negative. I really haven't. In the summertime, he's out there. He's got this little fiberglass thing he sits on, and he has a paint crew. Tim's out there. He paints the two bottom rails, and the boys paint the rest. Amen? He just keeps going. He does not give up. And he's got plans. He's got visions. I mean, uh, he wants to, to cut meat. He used to do it. He's not giving up. And that's the way we ought to be. Even though the problems in our life seem very difficult and serious, if we keep our eyes focused by faith on the Lord, we can finish this race and we can finish it well. Amen. And I also thought about somebody in the Bible. What about the Apostle John who was on the Isle of Patmos? I don't know about you, but I was burned 30% of my body, second and third degree burns. You know what he was? He was dipped in hot boiling oil. I can't even fathom that. But did he quit? Did he give up? No. How did John finish? John finished well. Amen. Why? Because his eyes were focused on the Lord and he never did quit. 
I think whether they're Bible characters or they're modern day examples that we know, all of those people ought to be an example for us. I, I look at old Tim Malloy and I think my problems in life, they're very minor compared to what he had. I remember when Tim came and I think he only had, he didn't have a thumb and he, I think he had three fingers or something like that on one hand, or it was on this hand I guess, and then they ended up taking his hand off and then they took it off below the elbow, and then they, they took this, uh, no, they took his other foot. They took his left foot first, and then his leg, and then they, they took fingers off of this, and then they took the other one. And never once did I ever hear him say anything. And he is an example to a lot of people to keep on going. And by the way, once his stumps healed up, guess what he was doing? He was back at work. Right. I remember the day that he bought a new saddle. He'd already lost one leg. He only had one arm. And I remember that Raleigh made a pocket to where he could get up on that saddle and he had about that much stump and he could stick that stump in that pocket and he could strap it down. I remember the first day that he got on, I was sitting in my truck and I watched him go over there and he got on the right side, he grabbed the horn with his left hand, he jumped up and stabbed his right foot in the stirrup and swung up into the seat. I have to tell you what I did, I sat in that truck and cried. Because there was somebody that didn't throw in the towel, no matter how bad it seemed. He just kept going. And he used to say this, I just wish I'd get to the point where they get done with what they're doing and I could go back to having a normal life. Wow, what a, what a guy. But then the last thing is this, to persevere and not throw in the towel, we need to follow the greatest example of all. And who is that? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. In 2 Peter 1.17, it says, For he received from God the Father honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. I think about how the Lord Jesus ought to be our example, absolutely in everything. And you think about how pleasing the Father, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for him. I think about the temptations I mentioned a moment ago. Tempted in all points as we, but what? Without sin. Uh, there was a temptation. There were the trials. I mean, trials all the way through his life, one right after another, stonings, trying to stone him, trying to kill him. I think also of all the affliction and all the humiliation. I mean, when they crucified him, I can't even imagine this. This was God come in the flesh, King of kings and the Lord of lords. They stripped him naked. They abused him. They mocked him. They ridiculed him. He never quit. He never threw in the towel. He never gave up. Never. And I think of the pain. I, have any of you ever been stuck by a thorn? There's something on the tip of those thorns. I don't know what it is, but when it goes in the skin, it's very painful. Can you imagine a crown of thorns that they put and they actually beat into his brow? That was just part of it. And then the cat of nine tails that literally stripped the flesh from his body. Most of us would have been crying, Uncle, we'd have thrown in the towel when they put the crown of thorns on our head. But he didn't. And then nailing him into that cross, where the only way he could stay alive was to be able to push up and be able to breathe. And as the pain and the weakness kept, kept coming and getting worse as he slumped, and he'd push up and get a breath, and then he'd go down, and finally the strength was gone and suffocated. You know what he could have done? At any time, he could have got out of that. But he didn't do it. He kept going because he wanted to please the Father. Amen. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 through 8 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Those are humbling words right there. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. But then I think also Christ gave us an example of deferred pleasure. You say, whoa, what does that mean? Well, that's kind of an unusual word. Deferred means to put off an action or event to a later time. You know what he did? He deferred to put off the glory and the majesty that belonged to him that was rightfully his. Amen. He deferred to have that on this earth, that he could go through and understand everything you and I would have to experience in life. And then he suffered, bled, and died that you and I wouldn't have to. I think about that in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him 
that next word, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. The cross was painful. There's no question about that. But the joy beyond the cross was worth the pain he went through. I don't know that we can understand that fully, but we ought to attempt to in our lives. It may be a struggle today. It may be a struggle tomorrow. We may face opposition. We may face heartache. And it just doesn't seem like it's worth going on. But don't throw in the towel because at the end, it'll be worth it all. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10 through verse 15, it says... For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. That you might not, uh, that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And I like this last part. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Listen, we need to patiently endure. We need to go on, never thinking about throwing in the towel, just lifting our eyes and looking to the one who can keep us going and give us the strength. If we throw in the towel, we're going to miss out on the eternal blessings. And you know one of the greatest blessings, and pastor has said this often, I probably said it too, but Matthew 25, 21 are going to be words that everyone in here is going to want to hear. And when we get there, if we don't hear it, we'll look back and retrospect in our life and say, boy, I wish I'd have not thrown in the towel. I wish I'd have kept going because these are the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. I think my prayer tonight for myself and I hope for everybody in the church is that we do choose to persevere. That we don't quit. That we don't just give up and throw our hands up in the air and say it's not worth going on. But we need to keep serving God, keep living for Him, and most of all, submit. As Brother Brown said the other night, the last point was submit to God. And in so doing, we're going to be pleasing unto Him. Ah, the only way we do that is trust Him by faith. We've got saved by faith. We should live by faith. There's a lot of times I've really, over the years, I've thought about just stopping. But I look back, and I'm glad I never did. I'm glad of the blessings that God has allowed us to be a part of. We had a missionary friend here last night. I didn't even know this. But the Nortons came through on their way. uh, They're on deputation. They're back from... Uh, Italy, they've been on the field. They haven't been home for 10 years. But she told my wife last night, she said, you know, uh, you guys have been a blessing. Our ministry and our overseas support, she said, almost every one of those people we have came from folks that you told us about. I'm glad I didn't quit. It's not just me, but it's other people that benefit what we do as a Christian. Amen? I hope tonight you'll not throw in the towel, but you'll persevere and go on because it'll be worth it in the end. Amen. Let's bow our heads, please. Father, I thank you tonight that you've given us your word, and your word never leads us astray. And I pray tonight, Father, that you would help each one of us to persevere. Help each one of us, Lord, never to throw in the towel, but help us to look forward to the prize that one day we can lay down those crowns pastor's been preaching about at the feet of our precious Savior. Father, tonight, I pray if there's